In this episode of Cars Plus, we are doing something that's rather esoteric, but maybe you'll find interesting anyway. And certainly those people who are restoring Graham Spirit of Motion cars will definitely be interested in this. In this video, you'll see how we put together the rather complicated square headlights from the 38 through 1940 Spirit of Motion cars. In that assembly, not only you learn how it's done, which will also show you how to take it apart, it will show you one of the reasons Graham probably didn't survive because it's so complicated and there's so many parts that this would not be a good thing to do cost accounting on. Stay tuned and see how interestingly this goes together. In this video, we're going to be assembling the Graham headlight, 1938 through 1940, Spirit of Motion cars. Here we have a headlight housing, which as you can see, there are little teeny holes, etc. in it. That's just from deterioration from age, but this is a sound housing to use. And none of that's going to show on the car, so we didn't go to the trouble of doing this. If you were doing a concourse car, you would want to go through and fill that all in and make it all perfect. doesn't matter for this. But we're going to show you the way to put this together, which will also effectively show somebody the way to take it apart. We're doing that because we know a number of people are restoring these cars right now. And we're doing this one for Kenny. First thing you want to do, once you've got your housing done, is create... A gasket in this area. In this case, this is a poured urethane gasket that we use. Originally it was cork. You could have used cork and cut the cork, but it's quite thick, fairly hard to cut and get it straight. The poured urethane is actually better since it's not going to show. Good way to seal up the headlight. The side, each side has an assembly in it. Now you can see we've already put this assembly part way in. These are the right and left aiming assemblies that we're going to put together. And let's show you what an aiming assembly is made up of. Aiming assembly is made up of a little metal plate with a slot, a spring, which is probably a phosphor bronze spring, and this stamped component, which I'm going to try to hold so one can see what it looks like. Stamped component looks like that. These are the three components, as we told you. This particular special stamped one, you have to feed through the two slots. And you really do need this spring in here. So you're going to slide this piece in. And when you're done, this is the way your assembly is going to look. It's going to have its little special piece fed through there. Now you have to put it in the slot. And there is a slot right here in the side of the headlight housing. So you're going to put it in the slot in the headlight housing. You have to put it in, press it because of that spring, and give it a twist, just like I did. And that will put it in general position. That's all you want right now is the general position. We've got one on each side that we've assembled. So you can see it looks like this on the outside. On the inside, you can see the three pieces. Try to keep your spring lined up and just line that one up. So that is the first portion of the reassembly here. Next, you need to have the springs. There's just one spring for each side and the special long screws that they have. Now, they're slotted screws. Nobody would see it. You could use something else, but it has a special number of threads on here. That's really the problem you've got is having the correct thread long enough to do the job. And what's going to happen here is you're going to take your spring. It positions between this tab and that metal bracket, metal bracket. And you've got to work this thing in here. And it is a bit of a chore to get everything together because everything wants to either not stay or push things away just a little bit. But you slide your spring in like that and line everything up here. And then you're going to take your screwdriver and you're going to screw this down. Now at this point, there is no possible way to say exactly how I should set this. Remember I said these are right and left aiming screws and brackets. So it's going to cause your reflector in here to turn right or left. 
So ultimately, the only way you're going to get this aim correctly is put the entire assembly into the car, then you can aim it correctly. Okay. Now we do the same thing on the opposite side. We would put this side together. We're not going to show you that because you've already seen one side. And that's good enough for the demonstration. All right, here we have our reflector that we're using. This is only going together temporarily. Make sure everything fits, works fine. Then the reflectors will be sent out for resilvering. Here you have your front aiming assembly for the bottom. What this is, this is the up-down portion of the aiming. It consists of this specialized screw, and you can see it's slotted at the front, a spring, and a special washer. That special washer is going to end up having to have to be right there when it's assembled. But what we have to do first, set up our housing. We're going to slide this piece in from the back because there's a collar right here that's got to go in thusly. Now we have to bring our reflector in the back and we're going to take this washer. We're going to set it on the assembly. We're going to put this through the hole and there's a long portion of that screw that has no threads on it on purpose. So you can put it through the hole like this. Then you're going to start threading it on here. Now, just as we cannot tell when we go to set sides, which we will put that together in a moment, you can't tell exactly where to set this at this point. So we're just going to put it together as a rough possibility of a setting. The only way you can set this correctly is when you put the whole headlight in the car and you do all your aiming with the headlight assembly properly installed in the car. It's got a tremendous amount of adjustment in it. And we're going to tighten it up quite a bit, enough so that I can bring these holes which are in the reflector up against these ears pretty much so we can attach the screws for that next. For the moment I've tightened this up a fair amount but I have no idea what's correct. We're now going to flip our headlight over and we have to take these slotted screws. There's a pair of them right there. One goes in each side. These are the right and left aiming assembly screws. So we're going to set our reflector in here and the reflector right now will tip, like I'm showing you. And you have to get your screws started in the hole so that you can then get them to start into the ears and tighten them up. And all you want to do is just start one side and then go back and do the other side before you get serious about tightening either side. So we got one. And this is just one of those things I can't really show you but I'm going to put the other screw in, then I'll tighten both screws down. You see we've got both our side screws in, left, right over there. We've also got our bottom screw in. All those are going to be adjusted on the car, right and left for aiming, up and down aiming is located here. Big thing to remember, I told you this reflector needs to be resilvered. If you're really putting this together with a resilvered reflector, wear gloves because it is a first surface mirror. Your fingerprints can ruin it and be very hard to remove without ruining your first surface mirror. So you really should wear gloves, but because this is not a good reflector, I'm not wearing gloves putting it together. Here we have the back can that goes on the assembly for the headlight. You'll see that we've hand cut a gasket. It's the only time I've ever had to replace a gasket on one of these, but the gasket in this one was totally missing. So we've hand cut one. If I was going to make a bunch of these, I'd certainly make up a file and do it on a laser cutter, but there's no sense spending several hours just to do one gasket. So that is our gasket here. You'll see the outside we have sprayed. This case was silver CAD. Even though this was new old stock part, we wanted it to look pretty decent. Even though you're not going to see it, it's more for protection. They really were a silver catting in the first place. We're going to show you how we put that on next. All right, the wires don't obviously matter right now. If we were doing this with the wiring, we would care about that. But all we're doing is this assembly showing you how it works. So you're going to put your back of your headlight assembly on like that. And you have a series of special bolts here. 
that nut is part of the bolt. It's not a separate piece. It's part of it. It has a definite top and bottom. The bottom is flat. The top has a slight little curve to it. That may not show in the video, but it is a definite top and bottom situation. So you're going to need to have all of these, which you have seven of them. They're going to go on the headlight. And you also need seven matching lock washers, which I'm going to grab, and then we're going to assemble this. And just to tell everybody offhand, those are number eight stainless steel lock washers that I'm going to use. Originally, they wouldn't have been stainless steel, but if we're going to go to the trouble of putting this together, and this is in the wheel well, and it's going to get wet and dirty, stainless steel is definitely a better choice. So now all you're going to do is you're going to screw each of these in to start them, and then you're going to tighten them down. I'm going to do that with a nut driver. I'm not going to bore you with that. All right, these special bolts I put in would have to have at the last minute nuts that go on them. These are number eight fine thread. The reason another set of nuts goes on here is there is a rubber shield that goes over this whole assembly with a hole for just the center. But the rubber shield goes around here inside the fender and these hold the rubber shield in place, all of these little special bolts. Sometime later in the videos for this Spirit of Motion car we're re restoring, we'll show you a rubber shield and it is absolutely necessary or the moment you drive over a puddle of water, water comes flying out the front of the fender and it just looks horrible and it's horrible for everything. So the rubber shield is necessary. You must have these special bolts. All right, we have our assembly here with four additional fine thread screws, half inch long. They're number eights. And of course slotted, four more stainless washers. And you can see there's a tab here. There's also a tab right there. And there are the same tabs on the opposite side. Those are the four spots you're going to screw those screws in. Here is our chrome bezel. You can see there are two mounting points on each side. Those correspond to these two points here. And we also have our lens, which is going to go in here. So we're going to set the lens in the trough. There's rubber filled so you won't break the lens. Then you set the bezel around it and you'll notice there's tabs plus shaping to hold the whole thing in place. And then we are going to put these screws in place and screw it together. So we'll do that off camera because I may be totally in front of the camera and we'll, we'll again show you it when it's finished. And then the screws have to go in. One thing to keep in mind is you may very carefully have to push or bend the tab out just a teeny and put all four screws in just so they start. You don't do the tab moving unless you have to. When you tighten it up, do not expect, as you notice, you see I can stick the screwdriver in here. There is a little, there is most likely at each point going to be a little gap sometimes like this when it comes together all the way, but they usually don't. So you want to uniformly and slowly tighten these up so that you get good pressure all the way around the glass piece. And don't worry about if these sit perfectly flat over on the sides. They're not probably going to. That's not important. It's just important that you gently bring all four up so that your glass piece is seated against your seal. Down here you can see the adjustment when it's lined up. Now again, I can't tell you how to adjust this except to put it on the car and do the adjustments there. On the car you would be able to get to this one, obviously, even with the bezel on. You'll have the side pieces, just like they're off here, they'll be off. That's the only way you can get to your side adjusters to turn it left and right. That's how you put this particular headlight together. Now there's one thing we did skip. Those pieces of glass have a ridge on the side. There's another little hole in here with a teeny screw that you can put in a screw and have a metal tab. There's no way to see that at this point. And it's not really 
Well, I guess I can probably show you. It's not impossibly necessary, but there really should be a little metal tab here. Because of how it's held right now, it's going to stay in place. And when we finally put it in the car, we'll probably make up a pair of tabs since they're missing off of these headlights. And we'll put that other little screw right there. And it's just a little metal tab that catches the glass here. But in all frank honesty, with the urethane rubber in here, it's probably not necessary. But originally with the cork, I'd call it more necessary because cork can shrink up. The urethane is going to stay the same size. But if you really want to have it absolutely right, you're going to add that little metal tab where I showed you right there on each side of the assembly. That is how to put together a Gram 38 through 40 Spirit of Motion headlight. There's too many parts for what they do, but it's, it makes a cool headlight, but boy, it's complicated. Nobody had a headlight this complicated. No one. So it's kind of goofy that way. This is a pretty headlight though. It's gorgeous. They're beautiful. Yeah. So when the car was designed, did they have to figure out after the designer died how to assemble these, how to... They had to finish the car design totally and that, that whole thing had to be engineered by Graham's engineering department. So that was after the man who oh, yeah. drew he the was concept dead. had died. Yeah, and so Graham's engineering department figured out that whole damn thing. Their engineering department designed that, Trish, mm -hmm. and it works. But it's really complicated, but it works. That's cool. It is? I think it's cool. It's pretty. Well, it's They're good just beautiful. To be there. They're just beautiful. Well, we have it sit somewhere else, but still. Yeah, you know, well, you now you've got a video to make out of it. So this is actually the next video right now, probably. I think so. Now, what's the man's name who designed the, the car? Oh, Amos Northrop. Amos Northrop. So after Amos Northrop had designed the car and died, mm -hmm. the Graham engineers had to come up with a way to make it. Make this headlight. Yes. And it's amongst very other things. Yes. They had to come up with a way to do it. Mm -hmm. And it is quite complex. It is very complex compared to other headlights of the time. Terribly. Mm -hmm. But it's pretty cool. It's so Art Deco. It is. It's totally Art Deco. It's very, very, very gorgeous. Mm -hmm.